Welcome to our ongoing series about the air motor style windmill from TexasWindmill.com. One of the most common questions is, what's the deal with the tail? Sometimes we see it facing one way and sometimes we see it facing the other. Well, the important thing to remember is the tail vane always faces into the wind. Here we see it facing into the wind and the wind wheel is directly into the wind. But if we furl it, turn it sideways, now the wind is not hitting the wind wheel. The tail vane is always into the wind. As the wind speed increases, the tail vane stays into the wind and the wind wheel and motor rotate around the center of the tower, causing less pressure on the wind wheel every time that it turns out. Let's watch this in action. Let's watch this windmill working in high winds. Now it's blowing 35 to 45 miles an hour, constantly changing direction, swirling around the trees. So the tail bends over, keeps the wind wheel from facing directly in the wind, taking the pressure off of the wind wheel itself. Now you may not be able to see the wheel spinning because of your internet speed, but you can see the trees in the background. It's a windy day and the windmill's doing just what it's supposed to do. This system of automatic speed control or self-regulating windmill has been around since 1890s. We still use the same system today. Let's examine this. The center of the windmill and the center of the wheel are offset. You can also see the center of the tail vane to the right. When the wind speed increases, the wind wheel wants to push and pivot around the center of the tower. Just like a flag on a flagpole, the wind wheel always wants to turn downwind or to the backside of the center line. The wind wheel always wants to turn to the left of the center line, but it's held into the wind by the tail spring assembly that keeps constant pressure to keep the wind wheel facing directly into the wind. As the wind pushes the wind wheel around to the left of the center line, the tail spring constantly tries to pull it back in to the wind. There is a shock absorber or a buffer installed on the tail vane to keep it from slamming in and out of the wind. A very simple system that works quite well. There are a series of holes in the tailbone that allows you to adjust the wind speed required to turn the wind wheel out of the wind. The further back away from the motor the spring is attached, the more pressure it takes to turn the wind wheel out of the wind. Let's watch it again. As you can see, the windmill is constantly working to get out of the wind. Now we use the same wind wheel that is super strong that they've been making since 1897, but if the windmill can't turn and get out of the wind, it will fold the wheel over. Guaranteed. It's just a matter of time. If a windmill can't turn out of the wind, it'll overload the pressure of the windmill or the tower. This is a good example of a windmill that was tied to the tower. It just bent it right over with the full force of the wind acting on it. Another common problem is the person who says they don't want to have their windmill spin, they want a static display. It just folds the windmill over every time. Thanks for watching and check us out at TexasWindmills.com for more information and more videos. Thank you.